Well, the idea came about because of uh, the, the thinking of Charles, you know, uh, who's one of our mining lecturers. He had the, the idea that we, that we needed to do something more practical and uh, for, for industry. And mm -hmm. um, we were considering a few options in terms of sites, and most of it involved pretty significant travel arrangements. So, um, and also uh, trying to find disused mine within you know, a sort of travelling distance of the campus was always going to be a challenge. Um, and someone suggested a, a service, this service tunnel under, the, under Aberdeen Street, um, which um, initially I think uh, we thought was a rather crazy idea. We had nothing real to give students the simulation of underground. And so the best we could do was teach them theory and when mining industry used to ring up and say, if we had this person apply for this job, how do you think they'll go? We could say they're very capable intellectually, they can handle it, but we've got no idea how they'll handle underground. I was always very confident that we would have strong industry buy-in. There's a long history of the resources portfolio of this college working with industry. Uh, we had, there's lots of examples of uh, sponsorship and equipment donations to the college. Uh, industry is a very active player in providing placements for students, uh, work, uh, work opportunities for students. And often now students uh, uh, are grabbed by the industry well before they complete their program. So uh, there was never any question of that and, uh, and I think if you look at the mine itself there's many examples where industry has got involved to support the preparation, they've given us advice on how we best go about it and if you look at the sponsorship board out the front you can see how significant that level of industry input has been. Supporting a local initiative like this and for the for training for the miners and training for other areas of the community as well is going to be good for us and good for the community and good for the mining industry we think. Our chambers are used in probably most of the mines in Western Australia so if, the, um, if people are trained here, they can actually go to the mines feeling confident they know how to use our refuse chambers under an emergency situation. I completed my certificate in 2001, so back then there was nothing like this as per underground classroom. We did about an hour of it, so a facility, facility like this is fantastic. It will give everyone a really good idea of what it's like. But I think anything that also provides more practical experience, it's hard for uh, the grads here to actually get out and sometimes get the work experience, depends on what's out there, but this facility would provide a bit more exposure for them for the environment that they're going to be working in. Um, it's quite a bit different, especially underground, it's hard to simulate that. This, this probably comes as close as I've ever seen, and if they are going to do that, then I think it would only benefit them. I thought it was a very good idea. Um, there's nothing like this in Western Australia at all as far as training for the miners, or, tra or training for people going down the mines. Normally the um, sites themselves have induction, induction programs and they'll show the miners how to actually work on the mines as part of their actual training as such, but uh, there's nothing like this in Perth. There is an Eastern State, some of the Eastern State's coal, coal mines have got training facilities, mm -hmm. but um, there's, as far as I know there's nothing in the actual Western Australia. Okay, well training and induction you know, can take up to a month before a person would be ready to work alone in the underground environment. Um, so here they'll They'll be doing some um, emergency drills and training, but that should, uh, when they get to the workplace, the trainer or assessor should see that they've got some level of competence, which should help them, you know, speed that whole process up. A lot of it comes down to the preparation and knowledge they have before they get there. Um, a lot of people will arrive out on site and not be prepared for an underground environment. Uh, we've had situations where people have come out, gone underground, and realised that it's not for them, so they've only you come out, run them through all their inductions for three or four days and then they turn around and quit on you because they're not used to it and weren't prepared for it. So pr preparation is really the big thing. Uh, the theoretical side, they always come out really well prepared. Um, it's hard to prepare them for working underground for the expectations for the sound, the noise, day shift, night shift, for the, the actual physical toll it'll take on them being underground 8, 10, 12 hours a day. Oh, it was it was awesome. Like you see it all in theory and the videos and the photos they give us, but once you're actually in here, when they say that it's an enclosed space and it can be daunting, they're exactly right. It's like, I mean, we don't have the humidity or whatnot, but of course we experience that when we go. But when you're in here, it's like you can actually say to yourself whether you can do it or not. So it's 
it's one of those things where you decide whether you want to do undergrounding or, or not, whether you want to do pit work or... So it, I guess it's just giving us kind of a warning before <laughs> we go and do the actual thing. So, yeah. I mean, we take whatever's given to us, but just being down here and experiencing it to begin with, it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we'll be learning how to actually plot an ore body underground because it's completely different to um, in a pit. In a pit, you pretty much, they've told us, you take everything. Whereas underground, they're really specific. You take just the ore body. So we'll be learning how to map that out, how to um, find out where the jumbos have to drill, like whether they go to the, to the east or straight ahead in the tunnel. So we actually get as much of the ore body as possible. I guess it's just seeing everything in perspective instead mm. of seeing it on a piece of paper yeah. in front of your face. Because in theory, it's like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. But when you're in the field, it's like, oh my God, can I do this kind of thing. We want to actually get a few cross-cuts planned, surveyed in as if we were cutting off to, to chase an ore body over that way, say. Um, we want um, a couple of charged up faces, so as if they're ready with all the cords coming out, the delay detonators, so that you can start it up and that face will blow. Um, a lot of signage, and we've got Barminko, which is bringing in a lot of that extra stuff, more hoses, more water supply services. Um, I think it'll be significantly, in a year's time, it'll be quite a lot different. I officially declare the cup open.